Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to show you how to use a multi-state tag to change register values within a PLC. So for instance you might want to have a tag on the screen that's uh, designed to control the drive and you've got uh, the states of stop, run, jog, and pause. Four different states that you'd like to be able to change registers within the drive or PLC based on the text of these particular words. If you look in my example here I've actually got over in communications, I've already got a uh, Ethernet port enabled. I'm going out in Modbus TCP. I'm using some Turk IO. I think for this demo, I'm going to rename it PLC just so it looks like anything else. But it's actually a Turk FEN20 product, which is really cool. You should check that out. Uh, anyway, let's go over to data tags on the left. And we're going to create a new tag here. And this tag is going to be my text button that's going to show the state of the drive. So I'm going to rename this guy, for instance, state underscore of underscore drive, for instance. And we're currently on the data tab. This is going to be an internal tag, so I'm not going to map it to anything here. But I am going to go to the word format here, go to the format tab. And on the format tab down here where it says format type general, this section right here, over to the right of there, hit the pick button here and come down and click on the word multi-state because this is going to have four states again. It's going to have stop, run, jog, and pause. So I'm going to choose multi-state and click OK. And you can see now that the format control, it says three states, which is right down here, but I'm going to have four states again. Stop, run, jog, and pause. So I'm going to hit the edit button right here and I'm going to put a number four in there and click OK. And now I get four different states down here. So I'm going to change this number here to be 0, this number here to be 1, this number here to be 2, and I'll put a 3 here. Okay. Now this column right here, where the text is, this is the column that's going to show up on the screen for the operator to see. Now obviously he's not going to understand S1 or S2 or S3, so let's make this easier on operator. Let's put stop here. The next mode will put the word run, for instance. Here we'll put the mode jog. And maybe the last one we'll put will be pause. Just kind of making up some different names we can use here for our drive control. That's all I'm going to do here. Now I'm also, I'd like to also make a register that maps to, or I'm sorry, make a tag that maps to the register in the PLC. So I'm going to click the new button up here again, the new tag button. And I'm going to rename this one register under, underscore PLC. So this one I'm going to map to a real register in the PLC. So if I go over to the word data here, back to the data tab I should say, and on the source on this one where it says internal, hit the pull down here and come down to the PLC that I've got set up. So I'll click on PLC. We're going to use the holding registers. Turks IO maps everything to holding registers. So I'm going to do the holding registers. And this particular product is going to map to register 20. Four, nine. That's where all the outputs are on the FEN20 station from Turk. So I'll put 2049 here, and then when I hit the Enter key, you're going to see it takes it, and it puts 40,000 here. It's the 40,000 series, and this is registered 2049. Also, notice the tag went from blue over here to red because this is mapped to a read-write register within a real PLC. The blue is an internal tag right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and get some testing done, done here. Let's go over to display pages on the left. And we want to put this particular tag on the screen so the operator can actually test this. So if you notice when I'm on the display pages on the left, Crimson over here on the right, uh, I happen to be in the data tags on the right section, which will allow me to grab the state of the drive tag and drag it out here like this. And then I want to show you a shortcut. I've shown this before, but I want to show you a way to make the font bigger and so forth. So if I take my mouse, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see the screen. I'll zoom in. If you notice, I'm currently highlighted on this. I got the focus, the red is around it. So I'll click away from it, which loses the focus. And then I'll just hover over this guy a little bit and I'll click one time. And this middle row here, I can make the font much bigger. I can make it bold. And this button right here is the data entry button. I want to turn that on because I want to allow the operator to change this value. So I'll click here. And now I've got a data entry. Now if I come out away from here and click away, I lose my focus. Notice the hazard lines. 
The hazard lines just merely mean that this box is not big enough for all the stuff you put in it. So I'll click on it one time and I'll grab one of these corners and I'll just make this guy a little bigger like this. And then I'll click away and I'll roll out so you can see the whole screenshot. Now I also want to show you the real registers in the PLC because we want to see if they really do change. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab the register in PLC tag and I'll drag and drop it down here like this. I might make it a little bigger and I'll just set it off to the side. We want to see this really change when we play around with this. Now on this example I also have the uh, web server turned on because I've got a Geo9 uh, HMI here in front of me but I can't get that on this uh, Cam Studio program so I'm going to use the web server so you can see that interface. So let's go ahead and download this and see what happens first of all. Alright once I download it if I go open up a web browser and pull up the address for this thing this is what's actually showing up on the screen so if I click on this button right here it brings up the keyboard and look I can change through these different commands by clicking up and down here as you see notice the tag name of the tag here state of drive that's just by default how it's got chosen our goal though is that when we pick a different mode for instance if I pick jog and I hit enter I want this number over here to change to a number one or a number two or a number three based on what current state I happen to be in all right, so to make this happen, we're going to uh, go back. I'm going to close the web browser. I'll just shrink it down here. I'm going to uh, double click on this particular function, if you will. Double click on this guy to bring up its properties. Notice right now that it's showing currently the label and data. This is the label of the tag, and this is the, the data value. Maybe I just want this to show the data value. I don't want the operator to see the name of the tag because I might put some better text up there that says uh, state of machine or something additional so I might change that a little bit um, the more tab there's really nothing in here to do but if we go to the entry tab this is really where the meat and potatoes of this is going to actually happen and you can see down below here on actions you've got these four different choices well the one I really want to use is the on entry complete meaning when the operator has chosen pause or jog or stop I want it to force the PLC register to go to some number so I'm going to hit the pull down right here where it says general and I'm going to go into what's called complex this is going to pull up the complex editor here and basically we're going to compare at this time what number the stated drive is in and if it's in a certain value we want to change the register in the PLC so we could do a bunch of if then statements which uh, requires a lot of work if this then do that but there's also another way in in the programming section you could use maybe a uh, a switch command so I'm gonna go up to the help pull down well maybe I can't do this with this open I can't do it with this open so I'll hit the cancel here I'll go to the help pull down menu ah, can't do it here either <laughs> I'll hit cancel here go to the help now <laughs> and come down to the word contents you can see that I don't rehearse these folks. Let me shrink this. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see that. Let me shrink that down. Move it over here a little bit so it's in the window. And I think if I go in here and go into the programming section, this is the online manual for Crimson 3. And I think if I come down quite a bit here to the programming section, aha, I just saw it there. There's a section here called switch statements. And let's see if I can get this to go over there. I always use this as just an example because I'm not a real C programmer, but let me make this a little bigger so maybe you can see it better on the screen. How can I get rid of this stuff? Um, maybe I can't. Oh well. Alright, so if I slide over here a little bit. Oops, too far. It shows me kind of an example of what I'm going to use for a switch statement here. You see switch, here's the name of the tag, and I'm going to do a bunch of cases here. Okay, so I'm going to leave this open. I'll go back to Crimson. And once again, I'll double click on this guy. I'm already in the entry tab, down here in entry complete. I'll hit the pull down, I'll go to complex. And according to that example, I'm going to type switch. Oops, switch. 
parentheses, I'm going to grab the particular tag that I'm looking at, which is the state of drive. I'll drag it right there, end parentheses, and I'll do enter, and then I do tab across, and I do the open brackets, and then I'll do enter. And then I'm going to type the word case zero colon, meaning when this equals case zero, and pull that help document up again, case zero, I want this to happen, and then I, I do a break, I check out, so that's good. So I'll go ahead and go back to my Crimson program here. So I do enter and tab across, this is how I do it. And then I'll grab my register and PLC, and I'll drag it out here and I'll say it needs to equal zero at that state. Enter, tab across a few, and then I'll say break, and then uh, semicolon, and that's the end of that statement. So that took care of the first one here. So I'm kind of tricky. I like to just highlight all this and I'll do copy, and then I'll come down here and I'll do control V, paste it again, I'll do control V, paste it again, control V, and then I'm going to fix this. I'm going to say this is actually case one. So when I'm in that mode, I want the PLC to go to number one. And then I'll go down here to case two, and I'll say this guy should go to number two here. And then I like to put a line, a little space here. And then I'll put three here, and this time it's going to go to number three. And then with a switch statement, if I recall, let me go back to my notes here. You got to have a default state, which we've taken care of all, but we still have to have a default. So we'll put that in there as well. So I'll go across default. And I'll just add a break because we really don't have anything going on with the default. All right. Whoops. That should take care of that. Cleans it all up pretty good. Yep. Got my one, two, and three default. I just need an end squiggly here at the end of this to match the top, a closed bracket. I always call it squiggly, but you can call it what have you. So there's what we have, and I'll get rid of this line here. Okay, I think this is all written correctly. If it is, um, it will uh, accept it. Up here where it says the word complex code, I'm going to change this to say maybe change the register in the PLC. Oops, and then I hit enter and it took it. You see it accepted it and it took it uh, uh, without a problem. If there was any problems in here, if you forgot something or so forth, or say you forgot this close bracket here, when you hit OK, Crimson compiler is smart enough to know, hey, you forgot the end of text here or some kind of squiggly. So I'll do that. OK, so according to the logic now, whenever we change this and we're done, we hit the Enter key, it should change the register in the PLC. So I'll click OK. I'm going to go ahead and download this to my HMI. And then I'll go back to my web browser so you can see what's happening. Notice right now the register in the PLC is currently set at zero. So if I hit the stop button here, and let's say, you know what, I want this to go to the jog position. I'll hit jog, enter, and look, it changed to number two right there. So you can see it changes correctly. As such, if I click here, change this to another number, maybe I go to pause, watch what I hit enter, it says number three. So that works pretty good, uh, does exactly what, uh, what we're looking to have done here, but you always want to check a few things uh, on this. Um, let's say I do this, folks, you see I'm running the, uh, the uh, HMI here uh, through the web, and I'm going to go back over here to this program, and let's just say, I just want to show you a change. I'm just going to move this thing right here, just down a little bit, just so my program changes ever so slightly before I do anything. I want to note, note I'm currently in the pause mode here. You see this is through, this is pause. The PLC is at number three. Well, if I go back to Crimson and download my program to the HMI, and if I go back to the, the view here, let it load up, notice that the register in the PLC is still three because that's where I left it, but a cycling of power or so forth to the HMI well, this thing comes up in its default stating here. So what I'm getting at is we really should have a function that, that loads in when this fires up. What is the current mode? We need something that loads in some startup settings here. So if I go back to Crimson, this all looks to be running correctly here. I'm going to write a very simple C program here. I'm going to write a very simple C program. So I go over here to the left and click Programs on the left. 
and I'm going to write a little text here forward slash and star enter and I'll put this program is ran once on startup whoops and then I'll do enter star forward slash that's just a little text box so I'm going to basically say you know what I need the state of the drive tag I'll drag it out here like this to be equal to what is the current value in the PLC on startup so I'm gonna run this once on startup I'm gonna find out what the value of this is and then I'll make it equal to this so my screen shows the current state now if you notice on your screen um, over here the program is currently yellow because we haven't compiled the program so you've got to hit this button right here which is known as translate we're gonna hit that button and if the program's correct it should turn green which it did I also like to name things correctly so I'm gonna click over here where it says program one I'm gonna click on that and I'll rename this startup whoops underscore settings okay all right I want that program to run once on startup so I'm gonna go back to display pages on the left I'm gonna click on the word pages up here on top I'll click on the word pages right here and you got these options under the global tab I want that program to run once on startup right here so I'm merely gonna go over to the right side and click programs on the right side and I'll drag that startup settings out here like this and drop it right in this field and now that thing should run that program on startup so just to check it before I download it to verify it works here's the actual screen or the actual HMI running you notice it says stop here but really the HMI is in the pause mode here because, or not HMI but the PLC is in the pause mode because this is number three so if I go download this program to it and while that's cranking I'll go over here and watch it's gonna load up and let's see what happens here boom look it started up automatically in the pause mode because it went out and read that first and now if I make a change to this say I go back to the run mode boom you see it switches to number one if I go back to the stop mode there you go and so forth it's uh, it's uh, showing the values correctly there so anyway that's just a quick example of how you can have a multi-state tag change register values within a PLC let me look at something else here I want to go back here yep double click on this guy real quick I want to check something I thought I made this just the data value but I guess I didn't <laughs> so if I go back to data value there then it just shows like that and then you could actually put a nice text box up here that says state of drive or control drive so if I go over here to primitives and I click uh, maybe I just want a uh, that's a button that's also a button I'm just gonna grab one of these actually let's do this we'll grab a text We'll drag out a text box like this and I will make this guy a little bigger and I'll right click and I'll go to properties and I'll change this to control drive state for instance just put some text in there click OK and then I'll orient that like that and then just to make it pretty I'll grab a panel maybe I'll grab just a, a gray raised and I'll drag this guy out like this and I'll make it well you know what else you can do too guys make this a little smaller and then I'll take the gray box I just and I'll basically put it like that oops ah. I'll leave it like that but then I want to make this thing in the background so I right click on it and come down to the uh, arrange selection and say move to back and then that'll put that on the screen like that and then once you got it on there you might just kind of use your arrows to tab it around and now if I download it this should look a lot prettier than what I just had if I go over here there the page pulls up and then if you just click on this you can see that you can now control so if I put it back into the pause mode which is number three hit enter and there it is so that's just a quick example folks of how again to use a multi-state tag to change a register in a PLC. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.